Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our first optional lab exercise in our exploration of symbolization and cartography in ArcGIS. In this exercise, we'll see how to use text formatting tags to control how labels are formatted in the map. We can control several text formatting characteristics, including font, text size and color, whether it's superscript or subscript, whether it's bold or italicized, we can control text and word spacing, and we can apply different formats to different sections of the same label. Most of these text formatting characteristics can also be applied to graphic text in your layout as well. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.1. Now this lab exercise specifically will demonstrate how to construct labels for the states of the United States where the label is composed of both the state name and the state abbreviation and where the state abbreviation is always underneath the state name and where each part is formatted differently. And to demonstrate this we're going to make the state name in one font and in one color and with one font style. We'll put the state abbreviation in a different font style and color. And if this is at all interesting to you, I recommend you take a look at the appendix in the lab exercise document, because I discuss all the text formatting tag options that Esri offers. Okay, let's start by creating a new map and putting in the States feature class. States is located in the Class Data Additional Data folder in the Additional FGDB. So I've got Catalog Map to the Class Data. We just go into Additional Data, into Additional FGDB, and there it is. I'm going to add it to a new map, which means ArcGIS Pro will create the map for me and just toss it in. And let's just zoom into this part right now. We'll start by constructing a label that is composed of multiple attribute fields, the state name and the state abbreviation. So we select the layer states, then we come up to labeling in the ribbon here, and here's our labeling options. Now, to create a label that is composed of more than one attribute field, we have to build that label using this expression builder here. Right now, if we added labels, it would just show the state name, just a single attribute field. Hit expression to open up the tool to build it. Here is where we are building the label. Right now, I'm, I'm going to switch from Arcade to Python to demonstrate this. Um, in, the, in the lab exercise document, I give examples in all four of these languages. It can be tricky doing this because each of these languages has their own little idiosyncrasies and you kind of have to learn the language and be comfortable with it. So in the lab exercise I do give examples using each of these. Right now in this video I'm just going to stick with Python. Now Python will let us concatenate two string values, that means to put one right after the other, using the plus operator. So if I do a plus here and then I did state abbreviation, then it would put the state name and the state abbreviation immediately after that. Let's turn on the labels real quick to demonstrate this. If I hit apply, you will see Arizona AZ, so one right after the other. If I want to put a space between them, I'd have to manu manually add that. Apply, now we have a space. I want to put the abbreviation in parentheses, I would have to put that in manually as well. So I put an open parentheses there, I'd add another text value, would be the close parentheses. Hit apply to this, and now we're starting to get in parentheses. And you can always check your current state of the expression using this verify to make sure that right so far it's coded accurately, there's no bugs in it. So that is the essence of building a label with multiple attribute values. You can put as many as you want in. Just use these plus operators to concatenate them so it's one long string. Now let's look at a couple of other little interesting things you can do here. If you want to force there to be a line break, so for example, Arizona has AZ underneath it. Nevada does as well, but Texas does not. Maybe you want all of them to be forced to have the abbreviation underneath the state name. Well, in that case, you would add a line break. And uh, the different languages do this differently. In Python, you can do it just by a, a backslash letter n. Python will understand backslash n to be a line break. So we hit apply. We'll see all of them got forced that way. 
Uh, different languages use different things. For VBScript, they use VBCRLF. Uh, Arcade can use this backslash n, or it can use this this long text. You just type in text formatting dot new line. Anyway, moving on. Now we are starting to get a little bit of interesting text formatting in here. Now let's start getting into setting different parts of the label to look differently than other parts. So, for example, maybe we want the state name to be in Times New Roman and the abbreviation to be in the font called Harrington. Harrington's kind of an odd looking font that's just sort of fun to play with sometimes. So I'm going to demonstrate with these two fonts and, you know, knock yourself out, use whatever you like. But to, to declare one part of the label to be in, in a particular font, we use these font, these text formatting tags. And text formatting tag takes this format. You have the, these two brackets and then the tag name here. And when you type this in, then ArcGIS will start setting everything after that to be in whatever characteristic you have set here. So if I set it to be font times New Roman, and I'll show you how to do that in a sec, but if I said font times New Roman, then everything after that in the label would be in times New Roman until I closed the tag with this. It looks the same as opening the tag, but with a, a slash at the beginning. So this is the general pattern for text formatting tags. I'm going to demonstrate a few of the text formatting tags, but I recommend you take a look at the appendix because I do demonstrate all of the text formatting tags that ArcGIS offers, and I show you what the output looks like, and I show you examples in all four of the these languages to to implement that tag. So anyway, we'll we'll just use a few of them in this lab exercise. Okay, first up, we're going to set the font of the state name to be in Times New Roman. So use this tag, but you can add a little extra information in there. For example, when we say name equals, that's where we tell what font we want to use. When it says size equals, that's where we give the font size. So I'm just going to copy this text out. I'm going to paste it in front of state name. In order for this to work, this portion here needs to be understood as a text value. So we need to put it in quotation marks and treat it like another text value we're concatenating into this. Put a little plus there. So this part will start it in Times New Roman. Then we have to tell it to stop being in Times New Roman. I'm just going to put that in this text value here. So. All right, and that will stop it from being in Times New Roman. So we can check it now. Expressions value, let's apply it, and we should see the state names change font. The state abbreviations are still in the original font. All right, so let's do a little bit more. Let's uh, make the state name to be in bold and in italics. So I'm going to put start the bold font, B O L, start the italic. All right, so now we have to close those. An important thing here is that they have to be closed in the right order. Uh, this follows what they call the first in, last out pattern. So the font name is first, then we set it to be bold, then we set it to be italics. Now to close these, we have to start with italics, then close the bold, and then close the font. So let's do that in that order. Close bold, all right. Now that should be formatted correctly. We'll hit apply and we'll see that Arizona is now bold italics times new Roman. By the way, if you don't put this in the right order, then this tool will no longer recognize these as tags for some reason. So if I just, you know, messed up the order here, bold came after font, then all of a sudden ArcGIS will just use this as the entire label, this, this long bit of text here. So it's no longer understanding these tags to be instructions. It, it's treating them as normal text. So we have to put them back in the right order or this won't work. If you ever see something like this appear, that means that there was some violation of the text formatting tags rules. All right, let's hit apply on that. So now let's put the state abbreviation in Harrington. Harrington is going to be like this, we're going to put it in font size 11. 
And we can just copy this piece right out of the lab document. Just going to go right before the parentheses here. So we are beginning a new font tag. Come to here. Now we have to close that font tag. I'll supply that. And we should see the abbreviation change into Harrington font. Yep, there we go. All right, so we're getting there. Okay, now let's set some colors. Let's make the state name to be in this Ganado red color, which is sort of a maroonish color based on the town of Ganado. It's, it's what you get a lot of the nicer Navajo rugs, I think, are in Ganado red. So let's use that color. So we, we set the font color using the CLR tag. So we're going to put that in here. And we have to specify the red, green, and blue values that we're going to use. And red will be 125, green is 27, and blue is 40. I have that written out here. And also, it be worth mentioning here that when you set these little parameters within a tag, like font name equals Times New Roman, Times New Roman is a, the name parameter. 12 is a size parameter. You have to put these parameters in single quotes like this. So you'd think just red equals 125, you could just put the number, but the, the 125 has to be inside a pair of single quotes. Also, if you don't know anything about the red, green, blue color model, it might be worth knowing just a little bit about it. In this system, any color you see on the screen is actually composed of just three colors, red, green, and blue, shown to you at different brightnesses. The red, green, and blue values can each be shown at 256 levels of brightness, which means there are a little over 16 million possible colors. If all three values are at zero, you get black. If all three values are at the maximum of 255, then you get white. This is basically the system that your computer monitor uses to show you colors. Now these formatting tags we're looking at, they can also use the CMYK color model if you prefer, or even spot colors if you plan to use special inks when you print these. All right, let's try them out. We're gonna use the red, green, blue model in this example. We've started the color and opened the color font here. So let's go down here to close the color font. Hit apply. We see Arizona changes and all the state names change their color. Now we don't have to set all three red, green, and blue values. If you don't set one of these values, then ArcGIS will assume that it is a zero. So if we want to set red, zero, green, zero, blue, 40, all we would really have to do is say blue 40. The rest would be understood to be automatic. Let's set the state abbreviation to be just blue equals 200. Like I said, we don't have to use all of these values. But I'm going to put them right before the font. And so when I close it, I have to put right after the font. Okay, that should make the Arizona State abbreviation to have a red of zero, a green of zero, and a blue of 200, which is kind of a dark blue color. Yep, there we go. That's all there is to it. The, the tricks here are to remember that when you use multiple tags, you have to open and close them in the right order. So if you start with, with one tag and then you add a second tag, you have to close the second tag first and then close the first tag. Some tags don't require any extra information like the bold face and italics. They're, they're just like toggle switches, like a light switch. You turn them on or off. Other tags like the color and the font, they require a lot of extra information where you have to tell it what type of color you're going to use, what type of font you're going to use. So they, they have to have extra parameters. And those extra parameters should all be enclosed in single quotes like this. Now you might have multiple parameters in a single tag, they don't have to be separated with anything. You don't have to put a comma between the name parameter and the size parameter. Just put a space there and that's that's fine. Okay, and I think that's a pretty good introduction for now. Like I said, take a look at all the text formatting tags that ArcGIS Pro has to offer. Uh, look over the appendix. They'll show you how to use the different tags using the different languages and, and Python and Arcade, VBScript and JScript. So give you some good samples to work from. And in general, have fun with it. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.